Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral. Where have I been? I've been working on a few tracks for the new Nightmare Swamp expansion. This was a modest one. I wrote three tunes for it. I wrote the Nightmare Swamp theme, the Nightmare Swamp combat, and the Nightmare Swamp Jamboree theme. So spoilers, if you haven't played it yet, there might be uh, some spoiler stuff in here for you. But it's been out in the world for a little while now, so I feel safe pulling back the curtain a little bit here. Now, they hit me with, hey, Nelson, could you write some down and dirty delta blues and zydeco and i said never done it before but i would would love to give it a try so this is what i came up with i don't really play guitar and i knew that this stuff was going to be kind of guitar heavy so gathered all my guitars around me and tried to figure out what made the delta blues sound like the delta blues but i knew it was going to be guitar heavy so the first thing i did was kind of find my tones here i'll put a picture up of the guitars i used on this guy i don't have a huge guitar collection i play a little bit uh my wife plays a little bit so we have we have a few just being a musical family first thing i did was tune them to open tuning because i knew i was going to be using a slide a little metal or glass or i think it can be ceramic cylinder that goes over a finger and then you get a really nice clean slide uh, over the fretboard i'll show you a picture of that give you the glass finger i still don't know how you're supposed to size it other than you know does it fit on your finger or not and tried some experiments with the slides. It started coming out okay. Let me jump into the other track for a second here. And you can see over here, this is pretty much uh, me experimenting with different slide sounds. Let's see if we can get a... Really let you get some good tremolo uh, on that too because the glass, the nice smooth surface of the slide lets you just glide over the strings. Yeah, so that's all on my um, hollow body guitar. And this is just a microphone on my acoustic guitar. None of my guitars are anything special. They're probably less than special because I don't, I don't really play them, so I haven't been able to justify spending more money on it. I usually don't have the luxury of being able to record uh, an acoustic instrument, either the, the time scale and budgets don't usually allow for it. So let's take a listen through this track, uh, and then I'll come back and try and explain what led me to these decisions. And there she is, the loop. Now, this track was only set to be a minute and a half. So it's a little short just because it's not, you're not going to be hearing this as many times as some of the other tracks that I've written. To me, everything came together. Uh, I found this sound. This is from a heaviosity library called Gravity, which has a lot of really cool pad sounds in it. And I found this sound and just thought it sounded great and spooky and swampy 
uh, in the way that, that we were looking for. So I kind of had that playing um, when I think swamp, swampland and the American Southeast, you know, you got your banjos. We got some twangy, other twangy guitar. It took a long time for me to get the guitar tracks right because I'm not a guitar player. So this particular sound, I think I've talked about it before, is a really cool free library. Um, I want to get the guy's name right. DavidBurgess.com. Just ambient guitar chords sound. And all you have to do is, you know, you hit a C. If you want a C major chord, the octave up for a C minor. And you can get some cool... Just really kind of spooky chords. So I've I found that when I was doing Lemuria and doing the Hawaiian tracks for that. There's a fiddle library. This is another newer one for me. And there's a lot of good contact violins. Um, in sort of a classical context, but finding one that's a little more country and appropriate for folk music was harder. So this one's called The Fiddle. It's uh, from a company called Indigenous. I have an acoustic guitar library from them that I've used a lot. And to me, their libraries are really inspiring. Like there's, they always capture something about the instrument that inspires you to, to, to write a piece. So that's obviously what I'm after when I'm looking for sound, something that, you know, kicks something loose in my imagination. And it's got a lot of fun parts. You can do double stops and it's it's got some little patterns, choppy patterns you can use in there because uh, we're just doing the little eerie, eerie bits. I think I just used this, the sus part of the, this library in this one. I also use it in the combat track. Squonking away up there, you should be here in the harmonica. This is another uh this is another sound i found it's the whiskey uh series honky tonk harmonica from embertone i've talked about them a lot they do a lot of really great small affordable boutique libraries that sound really great and are very good at usually one thing their legato stuff is really good this just found there's a lot of aleatoric sounds that you want out of a harmonica and i was able to use those for inspiration all over the place this dirty, grungy harmonica sound. <laughs> this was one of the first things I recorded trying to come up with what the sound was. That's my acoustic guitar, and I just kind of slid up that slide tremolo where you're just moving the slide back and forth on the strings to try and get them to, to ring out. This mo whole moment kind of came just from goofing around and trying to find different sounds. So I wanted that do do to to hit on that chord. So I added this uh, sub diver sound. It's just an 808 kind of sub bass kick drum that sort of dives off. Do. I wanted to be careful with that. So whenever you heard it, you'd be your brain would be clocking like how much time. But it set the scene really well, so I liked it. Acoustic line, just trying to bring it into the tune a bit. This is just an egg shake, little plastic egg. Editing Nelson, put it on screen. I'm sure you've seen these guys all over the place. I'm trying to do a little little rattlesnake suggestion. Uh, and then I did have some vocal tracks in here. That's yours truly. It, I think a lot of folk music sounds more convincing if there's human element to it. An old man on the front porch rocking chair just watching the world happen. The good and the bad. And the ugly, I guess. And then I went crazy over here. One of the things that you try and do as a composer is use instruments throughout. So initially I just had this kind of melody going on at the beginning and then it disappeared at the end. Uh, and I noticed that and said, there's probably something else the voice can be doing here. So I came up with this little background. Part. Um, um.
That harmonica track just does not want to be muted. It's kind of spooky until you realize there's automation on that muting track. Um, um, um. You've heard me say I'm not really a singer. I enjoy doing it when I get to. And these little bits, they feel good because they're it's it's a human voice. It's you know, it's it really warms up any situation. <laughs> My little hollow body, it's a uh, Fender Stratocaster, and it sounds nice. It's got a nice country flair to it. It's got pickups in it. So that melody uh, occurred to me relatively later in the process. I think I had the background pattern just going along by itself with just some of these eerie kind of sound effects and slides. You can see how I just pieced together these little bits of the slide guitar parts that I was messing around with. It was as much a surprise to me, I think, <laughs> as anybody when it, it winds up working. So I had that background going on with those two guitar layers, and then I figured it needed needed some focus. So I put wrote this melody and threw it in there. You can tell by all the little tiny clips here. Again, not a guitar player, so I'm pasting little bits of multiple takes together. Um, kind of cutting it apart to make the individual notes speak more. Uh, you can turn up, you can see that like right there, I turned the clip gain up on that one piece, three and a half decibels. This one's up seven and 0.8 decibels. And that reverb is doing a lot of heavy lifting. This is from a uh, fab filter. This is their Pro R Reverb. <laughs> now, this next bit, I actually rewrote. I wrote something and sent it to KI, uh, and my buddy over there was like, I like it. I'm not sure if it meets the, the eerie factor because it was a little it was a little lighter you can kind of tell where i'm you know it's a little more cowboy over here you take out the voices for a minute it's just got more of a pulse and it sounds a little a little poppier a little little peppier and that wasn't quite right for it so i darkened it down i made it minor and i added these like creepy voices in there The, the harmonica's got a little feature in there as well. See the different uh, key switches there triggering different samples. And this was also me experimenting with a new library, again, from Heaviosity called Symphonic Destruction. I, I mean, I think I need to own a library called Symphonic Destruction. Just, uh, I think I earned it. But this is a really good uh, inspiration machine to build on top of that. To me, this sounds like uh, an 18-wheeler rolling by you on the highway in the middle of the night somewhere out in the desert. So we're going to do a twofer here. Let's look at the combat track as well. Let's take a listen. I'll be right back.
So what they gave me for that was take the darkness of the Erie Swamp and add some grits, some nice rocking and aggressive tones, could possibly mix in some harmonic there. I wanted to make this a sound like kind of a roadhouse brawl. I saw the concept art of the backwater gators and decided that we needed Patrick Swayze plaid collared shirt with the arms torn off roadhouse rumble a real donny brook in the swamp this whole area in the game is a lot of fun so i really just wanted to like lighten it up a little bit with, with this kind of approach so we got the drum setting everything up here I have a PV electric guitar and have abused it. So it's got, got some dirt to it. And it's playing pretty much the same thing as my Strat here. It's really just a blues pattern here. I like composing with instruments that aren't my first instrument because they suggest like just the mechanics of playing the instrument make your make your brain do other things and make your hands do other things and come up with some new patterns. That's actually a pretty easy pattern to play uh, on the guitar in the drop D D tuning I was using and it just sounded right and felt right so I went with it. These are the two rhythm guitar parts and then I had to come up with some soloing which this scared me more than anything because again you know when you play guitar you can play rhythm and kind of fade in the background a little bit but when you're playing the lead you are up front All of that is with the slide, which is lending a lot of uh, credibility to the sound, I think, making my mediocre playing sound kind of a little meaner and a little uh, grittier. And I listen to a lot of blues in getting ready to write this stuff. So these are really just sort of licks that I picked up and I'm like, oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. You really do have to listen to a genre if you want to write in it. Really makes a difference between writing something that sounds legit and something that sounds like, you know, a little forced. You're not using the language of the genre, I guess. In addition to not really having the chops to uh, carry this whole thing on guitar, I also knew I didn't want just one instrument to be the feature of it. So I was going to have to throw it back and forth. So I've got the fiddle taking some of the lead here i've got the harmonica taking some of the lead here uh, and the, the banjo is always in the background kind of providing a little bit of support there the more you can make the parts interplay the more convincing and effective the whole thing sounds it needs to sound like the banjo players listening to the guitar player and vice versa and the fiddle players listening to both of them and try and come up with some parts and fill in some holes so you can literally see that happening here <laughs> fiddle player comes in harmonica and then the harmonica is going on here this is the midi up here and that part felt great the banjo and the fiddle player are playing together and it just it it sounds like it's a group like it's a band i also played a, a bass this bass is actually a, a short scale bass uh marcus miller model that my brother gave to my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, and she's she's still working up to playing it, uh, but I wanted to keep it uh, in tune, I guess. So I played live bass on this guy. I have a few different drum libraries. I really like this one, Real Drums by uh, Realtone, and it's a really great way to get a nice live feel really quickly. You just pick the parts, and you can change the different snares and the different uh, different pieces of the kit that you're using to get the sound that you're looking for. They're nice and aggressive. Focus on the bass and the drum kit. Get those together, and then everything on top of it tends to sound a lot better. 
Oh, that was a neat sound. Smaller uh, instrument palette than I usually use, but you know, a group with three guitar players, a harmonica player, a banjo, a fiddle bass and drums and probably another tambourine player i think that fulfills my uh, obligation to go a little bit overboard yeah so i hope you guys are having fun with this new part of the world it's been a lot of fun to watch people kind of run around and and check out the new vibe there's i did see there's a lot of people that are like wow this is this is really different this is a bit of a departure from the other wizard music and i i kind of agree i think that it's appropriate though because first of all this this area i think is just kind of like a fun little little side quest that you're on i'm also thinking of it as the further we get out the spiral just by virtue of its shape its geometry the the farther outside we're traveling the more kind of away from the central idea we're going to get it's it's my intention to always kind of keep it in the same world it's it's always me it's my sensibilities and the the ki designers who are kind of coming up with the new ideas so we're all going to try and keep it cohesive but it's been a lot of fun to get to try something that we don't normally do so thanks everybody for that opportunity and this is hopefully a quick one-off here and we'll kind of continue with the rest of the spiral shortly thanks guys see you later